live from the all-new Legend Studio in Ottawa, Tennessee. It's Tropical Country with B-Dog and Lou, right here on Tiki Man Radio. Uh-oh, guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Hump Day! Cowboy throw down here in H Town, where we're stronger than a hurricane. From miles around, the best of the best come here to put their tough to the test. Give it all for gold or go home broke when they open up that gate. Welcome, welcome to, to the show, welcome to the home of the world's biggest rodeo, where the stars light up the night underneath that Texas sky. Welcome to the show, are you ready for a ride? Yeah, you better buckle up and hold on tight Where the Bayou City streets meet the country roads Welcome to the show It's a Houston tradition 4-H, FFA, and go Texan And you can bet, son, it's gonna be around a long, long time these riders and ropers give it their best We'll show them how loud the hometown crowd can get Cause tonight, y'all, we all got a little bit of cowboy deep inside Welcome to the show, welcome to the home Of the world's biggest rodeo Where the stars light up the night underneath that Texas sky Welcome to the show, are you ready for a ride? Yeah, you better buckle up and hold on tight Where the Bayou City streets meet the country road Welcome to the show. Welcome to Tropical Country with B-Dog and Lou right here on Tiki Man Radio. We are coming to you live from the Legend Studio here in beautiful Ottawa, Tennessee. And uh, we are just a hop, skip, and a jump from the lake. We're not that far from what we used to be. <laughs> <laughs> but we are broadcasting live on Tiki Man Radio, TikiManRadio.com, and the Tiki Man Radio YouTube channel, courtesy of the, I, the uh, MFG uh, Tropical Live Cam. Wow. Going to be one of those nights, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Our show is brought to you by JBL Travel Group. JBL Travel Group is the official travel company of Tiki Man Radio and the partner for the Tiki Man Radio Escape to Paradise. When you're planning your next getaway, don't scour the internet trying to find a great deal. Trust a professional to take charge and guide you through all the red tape there is to go through. And it doesn't cost you any more, so why wouldn't you? Give Joe Leo a call, JBL Travel Group at 732 831 Five two zero zero. Gold Tending Services, GTS Charters is the premier charter service down in Key West. When you're in Key West and you see everything there is up and on Devolve Street, get out on the water and experience everything Key West has to offer, like a sandbar, the backcountry. Take it easy and just relax. That's why you go to Key West, isn't it? To just unwind and relax. Well, there's no better people to do it with than Monty and Gypsy at Goaltending Services. And before you get out there on that boat, make sure you visit Goaltending Outfitters, located at 5110 Overseas Highway there in Key West. You can get everything you need for your trip out there on the water. You can get your, you know, your coffee, you can get your snacks, get your suntan lotion, get your GTS swag and souvenirs from local Key West artists. And, of course, if you want to... Uh, book or a uh, cruise or want to know more give them a call at 305-916-0990 and of course uh party dog entertainment who's party dog entertainment well that'd be yours truly and of course i want to create the soundtrack for your next adventure 
uh, whether it be a bridal shower, a pool party, it doesn't matter. I do it all. I will create a custom soundtrack so that you will have a great time and create more memories. And uh, you can give me a call at 423-847-2454 or email me at partydogentertainment at gmail.com. All right. Got all that out of the way. So uh, got to say uh, hello to Laura Lou. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Well, we survived. We did. <laughs> I'm a little tired today. I'm not going to lie. It, well, it was kind of a, 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 a long night. You know, it really was. I'm a big, for those of y'all who don't know me, I'm a huge weather buff. Mm -hmm. Start, it's my daddy's fault. But, um, yeah, so we were supposed to get some nasty, nasty weather mm -hmm. um, last night, and they were saying it was going to be reminiscent of the Easter tornado we went through four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then to double that, our all of our kids in Ohio were going to get hit, too. They were actually supposed to get hit a little harder than we were. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think their Torcon was like a seven, and ours was a five. Yeah. So, yeah, we were we were pretty worried about them up there. I was more worried about them up there than I was us. But yeah, so we I spent a couple days making sure, you know, live and learn, right? So the last time we had a tornado, I had wet clothes in the washer. <laughs> I had um, dirty dishes in the sink. We were not prepared. We were not prepared. And we were without electric or hot water. For two for weeks. Ten. Yeah. <clears throat> so this time I was like, you know what? I'm going to get everything done so that if, God forbid, we're without electric for the next two weeks, we got clothes to wear. We've got all of our dishes clean. I even went and bought some more paper plates. <laughs> so... Got us a go bag, got everything together that we needed, right? Mm hmm We got like 10 minutes worth of thunder and lightning. That was it. Well, I'm thankful for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did say, though, the whole time I was getting ready in those two days, I was like, you know what? If I get ready, it won't happen. So it was kind of a tactic to make sure that the nasty weather stayed away. That's and right. Thankfully, it stayed away in Ohio. For where, the most part, where yeah. Where our family is mm -hmm. um they had some flooding yes but the tornadoes thankfully did not hit any of our kids um friends or family so absolutely that that made me happy yeah and, and for everybody that was chiming in uh uh for well wishes of my daughter when i said i posted that she had to evacuate her house yeah uh thank you everybody who uh, for that um she uh Conveniently, only lives a couple blocks from where her mom is, so she she had some place to go to take the kids, and everything. Uh, she, the last time I talked to her, she has not been able to go back to her home to find out if it has been flooded out. Mm -hmm. There, uh, the drive leading back to uh, where she lives and the whole parking lot area where was all underwater. Um, she sandbagged her front door before she left it. Oh, I was gonna so ask. hopefully uh, the water didn't get up into her apartment and, and uh, damage some things. So, yeah. but uh, most importantly, they are all okay. Yeah. All the other kids in, that are scattered all over Ohio are fine. A couple yep. of them are dealing with some high water, but it's nothing that the that the, they can't handle. That's so, right. They're strong kids. <laughs> they are. You know, they all. You know, my. It's so funny because Rachel called me. And she always calls me when this stuff's going on. And I'm like, honey, I don't know what, you know, g I, I'm eight hours away. I don't know what I can do to help you. But I'll stay on the phone with you. Um, she didn't even stay on the phone with me that night. No? No. She had her baby. She had her husband. She had her dog and her cat. Oh, hold on. Stop. <laughs> well, okay then. She was good. So, yeah. So everybody's okay. All right. Um, Donna Cummings is out there, and she well, hello says, to Donna. She says the Panthers waiting on the horses tonight, um, yeah. but she <laughs> <laughs> she is actually having snow. That's just so. a bunch of bull on here, right yeah. there. Ice balling out. Well, not snow, ice balls. Yeah, I saw where they were talking about that. How all the rain and everything I had that we had when it got up to the northeast, it just triggered. They said uh, in some areas they were measuring snow by the feet. Yeah. So that is just crazy how it is. we can get the rain and the tornadoes and how that just gravitates up northeast and then turns into all snow. Well, and you know, last yesterday it was 80 degrees here. Mm -hmm. um, an hour 
well, probably close to two hours from us. But the edge of the Smoky Mountains and up in that area, um, they're supposed to have some major snow tonight. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's just weird. Somebody hasn't gotten the message that it is springtime. That's right. It, it's ton, the snow, time to go away. It, it's We're supposed to have, you know, sunshine and blooming flowers and, you know, warmer weather. Yep. You know, old man winter's just got to go away. The knockout rose bushes beside the patio are starting to bloom. Boy, that's good. I know. I was excited. Um, also, I want to give a, a big shout out to Uncle Alex. He's well, hello, Uncle there. Alex. He's down in Boca. Um, so nice to see you. We miss you around here. Yeah. Um, and Monica, the producer, is out there. And, of course, vacuum cleaner Tom. Hello to you. <laughs> hello to Moni. Of course, uh, she is the producer of the big show Sunday mornings with the Tiki Man right here on Tiki Man Radio every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and can also be seen on the Tiki Man Radio YouTube channel courtesy of that Island J webcam and of course the vacuum cleaner salute goes out to Tom <laughs> <laughs> and Maureen is out there Mo, hey, says, Mo and the mystery man can't forget about him man. Mo says that we are riding to the beach with her, so all right, I will take it. We will be at the beach here in what a week and a half, something uh, like that. Oh well, a couple weeks, couple weeks. Okay, two weeks. Yeah, next, two two weeks. Next weekend is GRAP. Yeah, so be yeah the week after. Yeah. Yeah, so we will be heading to the beach in two weeks, heading uh, down to Panama City. I cannot wait for several reasons. Number one, <laughs> get to see Kathy and Darby. Absolutely. Number two. We get to party get to on the beach. The, that's right. Get to go to the Parrothead <laughs> Rendezvous and listen to some amazing artists, some great music. So. Absolutely. Uh, also, I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Callie McCool. Hello to Callie McCool and the student crew of, out there in California. Uh, Callie, they sent us a shout out in a commercial for their show. Uh, that I did get loaded up. So okay. we'll be playing that later in the show. Uh, it was pretty cool that the students did that. So uh, we'll get that I played here a little bit. So I didn't get to hear it yet. So, so and of course, uh, that is the student crew from Antioch High School that, uh, you know, surfs up here every Tuesday on uh, Tiki Man Radio at noon. And uh, they do a bang up job uh, back from spring break. So they should be all refreshed and ready to start rocking and rolling. And Callie says he's got a beer in his hand, nibbling on peanuts. All right. Um, oh. In his. Hold on. I'll, I think I'll join you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, he said nibbling on peanuts in his luscious spring green backyard, watching Ooh, tropical country. Nice. Life is good. <laughs> um, and Moni says there is green grass peeking through up there in Canada. Ooh, the green, green grass yeah. of home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's such a good song. Um, no, I don't have it loaded up. Sorry. Darn. Says, Uncle Alex says Boca is still windy. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. And Mr. Eric Tittle says, oh, uh, eight. Oh, brother. He is headed to Ohio this weekend for the eclipse. Oh, very nice. Ma I heard there's going to be some, make, maybe make, some make sure, clouds, Make though. sure you have your eye protection there, brother. Yeah. Yeah. I heard there's going to be some clouds, though. Yeah, we're only supposed to get a partial eclipse here. And, I think uh, ours is like, what, 80% or something? Something like that. Something like that. I know uh, a lot of the school districts around are letting the kids off early so they can go home and experience it. Uh, where I work, not so much. No. <laughs> no. Um, oh, Moni oh. says getting 15 to 20 inches of snow. After you just said the sun, the grass was peeking out. <laughs> well, that's about right. That's sad. That's about yeah, right. <laughs> it is. Um, and then, of course, Ed and Pat. Well, hello to Ed and Pat. Wait, hold on. I got a new one. <laughs> and that is the actual train. Yeah, the the train man actually recorded that while he was on that train. There so you go. There you go. Can't get no more legit than that. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and the ambassador is out there tonight. The she, ambassador of all great things. She's having to work over tonight. What? I know. So she's on a call. She's going to join us just as soon as she can. There's no working during the show. No T working. Tell them B-Dog said so. <laughs> <laughs> like right. that matters. That's right. And 
oh, Maureen's going to be at the Parrothead Rendezvous. Sweet. Well, I, I would expect her to be there. Anyhow, yeah. <laughs> She's not going to spoil you like she did last year, though. No, I've been informed by everybody that... Uh, You're going to pull your uh, weight. Uh, being waited on hand and foot is kind of gone, but they no longer feel sorry for me. So. <laughs> it's like, get your own beer. That's right. <laughs> uh, let me see. And the rock star herself, Beth Travers, is out there tonight. MFG Records rock star herself. And yes, Miss Beth, we do have a great lineup ready for tonight. Yes, we do. Um, and the lovely Larice. Hello to you. Hello Larice. to Larice. Larice and I were just talking the other day about luggage. Mm -hmm. um, she said they need some new, and we do too. Um, but she was talking about how they need some new luggage, and I, so I was telling her that usually around Christmas time, the places like Macy's and Elder Beerman and mm -hmm. you know, Coles. Coles, all of those people have luggage sets that go on big mm -hmm. sale. So, again, my phone heard me, <laughs> and it popped up in an ad on Facebook today that Macy's is having a big luggage sale Oh, online. really? So I wow. sent her a couple links, and, yeah, so hopefully you'll be able to get your luggage that you wanted. Well, very nice. Um, let me see here. Yeah, the grass is going to get covered again, Moni. Um, and I need to check my other pages. Okay, well, while you, do, you, go while you do that, uh, speaking of our lineup, we're going to have a great show. If you missed the uh, pre-show uh, video that we do, we have brand new music. We have music from Kitty Stedman. She just released her first solo album called uh, Truck Driver's uh, Daughter. And uh, it's pretty cool. It is a great album. Country, uh, it is country to the core. So, uh, great, great song there and a great album. Uh, we have a Hear It Before You Can Buy It, a brand new song from Aubrey Wallet called Coastal Cowgirl, uh, which is going to be available here in a few days, a couple of days, April mm -hmm. 5th. So, but you get to hear it first right here on Tropical Country. And then, of course, we got new music from Crystal King, who will also be joining us here a little later in the show uh, to talk about the new music, what she's been up to, what she's looking forward to, and all kinds of good things. So uh, Her that, new song is pretty cool, too. Her new song is absolutely Me, Myself, and Islands. I mean, you can't beat that. That's her first but, official Tropical Country single. I know. And uh, we'll let her tell you, but... Uh, that's a co-write with a good, uh, familiar person that we know. Oh. So uh, I'm sure she'll uh, let us all know about that <laughs> here a little later in the show, probably about right about the top of the hour, uh, sometime after the brand new JBL Legend Travel Minute. So, Sweet. And I think uh, tonight is something about maybe Malta. I don't know. Oh. So you'll have to stay tuned to find out. Hmm. Sounds interesting. Yeah. And then you were saying there was a couple people who were... Who yeah. chimed in on the video, and it yeah. won't let me see who they are. Well, well, one of them was the our ambassador. Uh, she was all over it and saying hello. Um, let's see. Uh, Steve Clevenger was out That's there. The yeah. One. And then also Lance Bella. We want to say hello to you, hey, Lance. Lance. So, um, and I know Crystal has really been promoting all day and all yeah. day last night, getting ready for the show. So we're really excited to have Crystal I wish that she could be in studio. But yep, but she's a busy girl. She uh, we is. was talking about that last night uh, while we was doing a little bit of sound check. You know, because not only is she a fantastic singer-songwriter, she's also a uh, weekend host at uh, yeah. Radio Margaritaville there on Sirius she's got XM. Your dream so job. She got my dream job. And I told her <laughs> that last night. Said, Did you, you? You got my dream job. And she goes, but do you? Do I? Really? <laughs> do I really? And I'm like, well, yeah. And she goes, you don't understand. And I says, what? And then she started making me feel better. She goes, who's your program director for your show? And I'm like, me. She uh -huh. says, who picks your lineup? Me. Uh -huh. Who decides what guests you're having? Me. And she goes, yeah, I don't. So right. she goes, you got my dream job. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, oh, honey. What? Mo says, B-Dog, if you need assistance, I am there for you. Oh, oh, so Mo is still. I, I know I could always you. count on Maureen. I know <laughs> she's always got your back. That's right. Somebody's got to have my back, and you just wander off with strange men. With strange men, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so funny. 
Um, for those of you who didn't hear the story, last year, Miss Patty with an I, um, I'm going to blame it all on her because she was feeding me, are they called little beers? Yeah, yeah. We talked about this last week. Yeah. And so I apparently was seen, I was talking to someone, um, and apparently he and I left uh, from underneath the tent at the same time. He mm-hmm. went one way, I went the other, but nobody caught that. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Patty with an eye may or may have not been a little under the influence. <laughs> she was kind of drinking those little <laughs> <laughs> But she did have us on a wild goose chase looking for you. <laughs> yeah, and I was standing about, what, <laughs> 10 feet from the tent, staring at the water, where I usually am. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, um, I, I thought of another reason why that's my favorite place to go. Because of, I get to see the little Larrys running up and down the beach. They're basically going, what? I, L- so little Larrys. Larrys, I don't know if they're sand dauber. I don't know what they are. Somebody th- has told me a sand, couple sand times. Sandpipers or something sand like that? Sandpipers. Maybe that's them. Little birds. Little birds. Anyway, I love them, and they run up to the edge of the water. And then as the wave comes in, they run back away from the water. And then they run to the water. And I just think hmm. they are the cutest little thing. She could sit there for hours staring at that little I bird really running back and forth, can. back and forth, back. She could. She could just sit there and watch them I for really hours. Can. Yeah, <laughs> I love them. And that's the only beach that I go to that I see them. That I've seen them recently. I will say. Mm-hmm. And so I got a little. Um, it looks like a hand carved little sandpiper that she calls Larry. That yeah. Well, actually, Alicia <laughs> named it Larry. So now they're all called Larry's, but yeah, you'll see them in our video, but, <laughs> but yeah, I love them. So that's my other reason that I love going to Panama city beach. So that's what I was doing was wandering away and watching the little birds on the beach. Okay. I'm just saying no strange men were involved. <laughs> <laughs> Except for a little bird named Larry. Except for a little bird named Larry. I love him. All right. Any other shout outs that we got tonight? That is it for right now. All right. Well, how about uh, we just get this show underway because, you know, as uh, you know, we have talked and I think everybody would agree that uh, everybody needs their beach.
Sunny California. We are the Anyak High School student intern crew from Surf Sub Show with Mr. McCool and Tiki Man Radio West Coast Edition. When we get stressed out with life and homework, we like to take a mental break by tuning into good vibe music on Tropical Country with B Dog and Laura Lou Wednesdays at 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Island Time, only on Tiki Man Radio. TikiManRadio.com. What could possibly go wrong? Of the Gataway, Lily Grace, and of course, before that was Christian Bush. Hey, everybody needs their beach, which of course we got exciting news this week that uh, Sugarland is uh, reuniting. Yeah, how about that? That was pretty exciting. Yeah, they are going to be just for a minute though. They're going to be hosting the uh, CMT uh, Video Music Awards. So how cool is that? Yeah, I think that's really cool. Yeah. It'll be nice to see them back together again. They were always a lot of fun. I know. And, uh, you know, she hasn't done much uh, since they kind of went their way. She had a little solo career for a little while, and it seems like she just took a break as well. You know, I think she, and I'll have to look this up, but I know that she's had a couple kids now, and it seems like she may have backed off a little bit just to raise her family. Well, who could blame her? Spend some time at home. Yeah, I mean, she's been busting butt since she was young so she deserves some time off for sure well although 
having kids. I don't know how much <laughs> that time off that is, but right, still. Right, right. Which everybody knows, uh, Christian, he's been uh, touring around the uh, yeah. Trop Rock and Coastal uh, community and released some great uh, great albums and songs, and he's been he's all over. He's on my radar. He's been all over the place. Folks that I would like to get on I, the show. I know, and, you know, we know some people that's uh, been performing with him as well. And, I know. You know, we've, we've been trying to, you know, hey. <laughs> yeah. While you're on the road with him. While you're on the road with him, you might not. You know. <laughs> you know, and we really do try not to um, bother our people. Bother like that. people yeah. like that because yeah. I know there has been, well, not that I have it happen very often, but there have been times where I was the one in the situation where I had was backstage and people were like, take me with you or <laughs> tell so and so I said hello. And. And you really can't when you're right. backstage with other artists. You really just have to act like they're nobody. You belong there. Yeah. So, you know, you you say hi in passing, and that's it. You really right. can't go up and be like, "Can I have your autograph?" So, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, we joke around with a lot of people and like, "Well, put in a word for us," mm. but we know that they really yeah. can't. Yeah. I mean, we we've been fortunate uh, to be around a, a lot of mainstream uh, country artists. And yeah. but we've been in the environment. It's uh, the working environment, and you know when you're backstage and things like yeah. that. And you know you do. You have to stay professional. Yeah. And you know, as they said, you gotta act like you belong there. That's right. So you know, so that that one day, like I said, I was having a whole conversation with Eli Young. <laughs> we didn't know. I didn't know it because because <laughs> I tell you what, that guy put you know, when they are in a uh, clothing that you. That is not stage wear. Mm -hmm. You've done, sometimes there's some of these people that they literally do blend in. Well, yeah, it's one of those things where you recognize them when they're in the element that you're used to seeing them in, and right. in the wardrobe you're used to seeing them in. Right. But to see them out on the street, <laughs> I don't know that I would recognize. And we didn't recognize. You know, we were yeah. just standing there talking, and Eli Young just walked up. He walked up and started talking. Asked, to, asked to borrow a lighter. Yeah. Sure. You yeah. Know? So, but we didn't know. I thought he was a roadie. Yeah, literally, you know, ripped up jeans, flip flops, and a ball cap, right. and sunglasses. Yeah, you know, you don't know anything, and then you know, see him start walking toward. You. Hey, nice talking to you. Talk to you later, and I'm like, yeah, nice Walked talk to up you. To do sound and then all of a sudden, walk him, well, see him walk back to a tour bus and climb <laughs> on board. And I'm like, okay, it's a roadie. Yeah. But then you see nobody else get on that bus. And then they come out. And then about 15 up. minutes later, the bus door opens and he steps off in full stage gear. And you're like, holy crap. <laughs> right, right. I, I just stood there and had a conversation with, with you know, yeah. Eli Young and had no clue who I was talking to, yeah. which is almost embarrassing. But the it's fact, a good thing. But, but, yeah, I mean, he literally, he blended in. I, I, it's uh, a very good thing. Yeah, because I just didn't know. Had we known, mm -hmm. I mean, you talked to him more than I did. I was yeah. just kind of standing. I probably there. talked to him for twenty minutes. Yeah, I was just standing there smoking a cigarette. <laughs> I just handed him the lighter. Well, then you walked. You walked away, and I kept talking. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I walked away because I didn't know who he was. <laughs> um, but you know, had we known, mm -hmm. we probably would not have been able to talk to him. Right. Because we would have been fumbling over our words and all starstruck. So mm -hmm. it's probably a good thing. Hey, Flaz. How are you? Flaz Noogies. Um, so, Beth, they have a name for folks that don't act cool backstage and approach the artist like a tourist. <laughs> the word works as a verb or a noun. It's a germ with a hard G. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I love that. So, well, yeah, so yeah. we have not made that mistake. No. Thank goodness. No. But it, no. It, like, and, you know, I stood... Uh, Literally 15 feet from Brooks and Dunn while they were on stage. Yeah. I'm standing like beside their guitar rack. And, yeah. you know, and I, I talked to Kix uh, briefly. Yeah. And uh, very nice guy, by the way. Very nice guy. So, yeah. um, those, those guys were fun. Like I said, we've had those opportunities uh, around once we, you know, since, you know, our Thanks, Mr. Van Fossen. Our adventures. Thank you to Mr. Van Fossen for letting yeah. us tag along and, you know, do the things we got to do for him and with him. And, yeah. uh, yeah, and then like I said, there were some other artists, you know, those other artists who were just like, "Hey, you want a picture?" Yeah, Neil. <laughs> you know, he's like, "Okay, I'm like, take your shot, guys." Well, Neil yeah. McCoy is like that. He was. Yeah, and he, and he was. Right. I'm Neil McCoy. Like yeah. I didn't know, yeah. but yeah. and then you want a picture? Sure. Well, the funny thing is, is he wanted a picture with us just as much as 
because he keeps pictures of him and yeah. and people he meets as well. So yeah. that was kind of cool. He's like he wanted a picture for himself. Yeah. So and Les did not. No. Le- Les, <laughs> Les hates me. <laughs> um, but yeah, the um, hard G a charm not. Oh. Oh, what's that? Nothing. I can't say it right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was reading best explanation. Never mind. <laughs> um, you bumped into Mick Jagger, Moni? Oh, cool. She said, I did that when I bumped into Mick Jagger. Yeah. Mick Jagger? Yeah. Now, I can tell you back in the day when we were there. Oh, she, the, she the, ignored him. She didn't know. There, was. there was one time that I, I really did have a hard time containing myself. And you know this was back oh, yeah. when I got to meet Laura Bell Bundy. Okay, you know when oh, she yeah. when she was you know hot on the scene and you know and uh, she sat down right across from me and she's like, "Hi, how you doing?" I'm like, "You're Laura." Is that when we were eating? Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, "Her and she sat down there and also Kimberly Perry yeah. sitting to sit down in front and they're you know very very nice. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. You know and. And then they walked out the door, and he and looked at me like, like, oh, my God. <laughs> I yeah. just sat and talked to Laura Bell Bundy and, Kim, <laughs> and Kimberly Perry. And she had her. And they are both gorgeous. Yes, they're very pretty. <laughs> and Laura Bell Bundy had her cute little short shorts on. and Her glittery outfit. Her, yeah, you were in heaven. I was. <laughs> I was like, giddy on up. <laughs> <laughs> that made me cough. <laughs> well, Hey, Mr. Ed Kubiak. Well, Come hello on, to Ed yeah. Kubiak. Hey, he's a he's a conductor on that that peace train every Monday night right here on Tiki Man Radio. That's right. Uh, he and Felicia are both out there tonight. Well, hello to the appetizer queen. So that's one thing that uh, that's one thing we're missing here. We don't have any appetizers or anything like that. No. We're we're lucky if we get dinner <laughs> on Wednesdays. So on, we- on Wednesday nights, it's usually one of those things on my way home from work. Because she's been working all day, so she hasn't really had time to cook. Yeah, I don't get off till five. So she don't get off till five. So she's like running around right before the show to get ready. So there's a lot of times. Yeah, because I work from home, so you know I'm not already dressed. No, she's still sitting in her pajamas. (laughs) mm, I digress, but uh, a lot of times I stop. I stop and get dinner on our way home. Sometimes it's a pizza. So tonight it was KFC. That's right. Because for some odd reason I was craving chicken. (laughs) Works for me. I didn't have to cook it. Hey, Patty with an I, how are you? We were just talking about you in a good yeah. way. Yeah, um, of course. Uh, Patty with an I and her significant other, Rick the Stick. Of course, that is uh, on the road with Rick the Stick. It's 5 o'clock somewhere every Sunday night at 5. And Beth said, everybody be sure to give a thumbs up and like yes. our show. Yes, thumbs up, thumbs up. Please give us a thumbs up. That's right. Listen. We appreciate you. Listen to Beth. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> hey, Beth, I will tell you, um, if you notice, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get it over there if I can. If you can see uh, above Laura Lou and around Laura Lou, you know, we have a lot of blank wall space. So. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Because she always says every Sunday, I got a, I got a banner for you, I promise. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> Well, wasn't Dave in charge of sending that? I don't know. I am not throwing Dave under the bus. <laughs> I'm trying to help you out, Beth. <laughs> um, well, you know, so I do have a story time real quick. Oh, you do? I do. Well, okay. So, you know, there's been an ongoing debate for years now about the door for the Titanic. Yeah, that if uh, Whether or not Jack could, could Jack fit. literally fit on the door. That's right. You know, that thing just went up for auction and sold. Exactly. Guess who mm. bought it? Who bought it? The Titanic Museum attraction in Pigeon Ford. No kidding. They bought the they bought yeah, the uh, buddy. the real prop. They have two locations. One is in Pigeon Forge, mm. one is in Branson, Missouri. They bought the door, the actual although James Cameron says it's not really a door. It's a panel from one of the staterooms. But anyway, mm. it looks okay. like a door. It's um, in reality, it's probably just uh, a painted piece of uh, <laughs> foam. Or foam. <laughs> yeah. um, they bought it for, it is a real wood panel, it says. Mm-hmm. They bought it for 
and eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Well, that would explain why it costs an arm and a leg to go to the exhibit in Pigeon Forge, right? <laughs> and uh, in case you didn't know, ticket prices just went up because the rumor has it they <laughs> bought a door. <laughs> right. Well, they did say that they're trying to come up with a plan on how to balance it between the Pigeon Forge location and the um, the other one that I just said, the Branson location. So, but when I find out that it's at Pigeon Forge, we got to go. Well, my, I, you know, I've said it all along, you know, there's one way to solve that whole debate. Give that door to the Mythbusters. They'll figure it out if that door could have actually <laughs> helped. I guarantee right? you. Right. <laughs> they may have already done that, but without the, but probably without the original door. But you know, you got to do it with that original door to be able to right. know for sure. Right. When we went there, I have such mixed feelings about it. Mm -hmm. The outside of it looks so cool. The the museum, the outside looks so cool. The staircase was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it was just like being in the movie. It was. Only Jack wasn't looking at me. But anyway. So sorry, <laughs> I'm just saying. You have Laura Bell Bundy. I have Jack. <laughs> um, so, it, but it wasn't as much. There weren't as many true artifacts from the Titanic as I thought there would be. Yeah, it was a lot more. There were a lot of pictures, a lot of photographs, and things like that. But there wasn't the actual artifacts like i thought there, 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 there were, were a few there were a few like uh you know one of the actual original deck chairs yes that uh, was cool was in there that they had purchased and some odds and end items from you know individual passengers mm -hmm. and things that they they had collected a lot of artwork and some uh like I don't, you can't, I don't know if you can call them home movies of uh, people loading on the uh, yeah. the Titanic and everything. So, you know, yeah, there there wasn't as many artifacts as what you would expect. Mm -hmm. But um, there was some cool things in the, that we saw in there. Yeah. But, the um, coolest part But if me. you're going in there to thinking that it's like a, a big, legit, like, museum full of artifacts, that it's not. not. Yeah. No. It does have a lot of interesting things, and you could spend oh, a lot absolutely. of time reading the facts that are in there and mm -hmm. things like that. But the coolest part to me was when you're standing in line waiting to go, you buy your ticket. Um, and when you're standing in line, they start passing out boarding passes. Boarding passes. <laughs> and each one of these boarding passes has an actual passenger's passenger name. or crew member yeah passenger or crew member has their name and some information about them and, and their a picture, picture. Mm -hmm. um, and when you get all the way through the museum you take that boarding pass and they have this huge wall and you get to read whether your passenger whether the passenger that is yours lived or died on mm -hmm. the Titanic um, and so you learn even more about them at that point. If they lived, it even gives you some information on what they went on to do and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I thought that was really neat. That was probably my favorite part because when they handed us the boarding passes, it really just gave me goosebumps. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I just thought that was cool. But the other items that were sold at that same um, auction, okay, the whip from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Sold. And I don't have my whip button anymore. <laughs> Sold for $525,000. Wow. The axe, and the Titanic Museum did not buy all of these. It oh, doesn't okay. say who bought them. Um, the axe that was carried by Jack Nicholson in The Shining mm -hmm. sold for $125,000. And an original Stormtrooper blaster from Star Wars sold for $112,500. Who would want one of those? They don't hit anything. <laughs> you ever seen a Stormtrooper shoot? They don't hit anything, so they what good really would it be to have a Stormtrooper's blaster? <laughs> they really don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, so interesting stuff happening at the auction, apparently. Well, very nice. Oh, Mo has been to the Titanic Museum in Ireland. Ooh, is that the one that's the big one? Like the big, big one. 
Um, I know overseas somewhere they have one that is huge. You know, they actually recreated the uh, Titanic, and it's actually sailing. Did they sail it? I think they did, like a, maybe a year or two ago, uh, uh, that they sold uh, tickets for a uh, ungodly amount. Oh, I bet. So, and it was following the same route as the original Titanic, so you had to get on it and oh, let's just and sail on it. So, but uh, you know, if you look at the Titanic next to a modern day cruise ship, yeah. that thing is a tugboat. <laughs> it is. It's really not that. Big. You know, it was luxurious back then, and that was the one cool thing when we did go through the uh, museum. You did get to see how, like, how big the st state rooms were, mm -hmm. um, what first class, second class, and third class, what their accommodations really were. Really were. Yeah, they did have a one of each of those rooms. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, I'm looking at the third class, you know, and I'm like, I slept in worse. You know, right? our accommodations in in the uh, on ship when I was in the Marine Corps was not that good so <laughs> well and you know they said that that was the draw because even the third sh even the third class was better than yeah it was nice anywhere than most first classes anywhere else yeah it was nice so yeah it now was mind bad. you the, yes the uh, first class was you know oh, yeah. very beautiful very luxurious yeah but you know we all put our pants on one one leg at a time i'm glad that the world well that we are finally starting, just starting to learn that. Because um, I'm not all up for the different classes, but um, yeah. Oh, both museums in Ireland, there's two. Oh, wow. I, that I did not know. I did not either. Hmm. Now I have to look that up. <laughs> well, uh, while you look that up, uh, how about uh, we're going to get in some more music, and then we have a JBL Legend Travel Minute coming up, and uh, not too far away, uh, Crystal King will uh, be joining us here on the show. So how about a little Jason Bird Golf Coasting? Sugar sand, no plan attitude. Chilling at a beach house barbecue. The only hurricane I'm gonna see is this cold drink in front of me. Left the rat race for a vacay pace, at least for a little while. Florabama to Apalachicola, Mexico Beach, all the way to Santa Rosa, Red Bar, Raw Bar, meet me on the sandbar, BYOB, somebody bring a guitar. Screen, we're all roasting. Hooter Brown's up now, raising glass toasting. Living in the moment, everything's flowing. Just go coasting. Oh, boys, look to there. Come on now. Two piece bathing suits, four piece band. Dancing all night, just cause we can. Gotta be on the boat by 6 a.m. We're gonna get to do it all over again Down, shifting, cruising, drifting Least for a little while Floribama to Apalachicola Mexico Beach All the way to Santa Rosa Red Bar, Raw Bar Meet me on the sandbar BYOB, somebody bring a guitar Pouring on the sunscreen We're all roasting Hooter Brown's up now Raise a glass toasting Living in the moment Everything's flowing
show Real Life with Butter and the band Trailer Choir. You should do what I do and tune into Tropical Country with V Dog and Lou on TikiManRadio.com. That's Wednesday, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Island Time. Holla! Tiki Man Radio is gearing up for the 8th annual Tiki Man Radio Songwriter Showcase QS Bound, October 31st through November the 2nd at the Rick's Dirty Harry's Complex on Duval Street in Key West, Florida. All the artists are booked and locked and ready to go. And of course, our event is free to the public. Everybody is a VIP. This year, of course, we're bringing back the SAC Awards, sponsored by Tiki Man Radio and presented by Tim Campbell. And new this year is the Jimmy Buffett Look and Lock Contest, brought to you by Land Shark Logger. That's right, come dressed as your favorite era of Jimmy Buffett and win a special prize by Land Shark Beer. That's going to be on Friday night, right after Dave McKinney and the Hungry Heart Luck Heroes Band plays. And of course, we're going to honor our friend Bill Crawley. Make sure you come by the Tiki Man Radio table and pick up your fans' fans. Of Bill Crowley. I want to see a lot of pictures. We want to make this special. Bill Crowley played at every event we had, and we want to make sure that we honor our good friend. That's the 8th Annual Tiki Man Radio Songwriter Showcase Key West Bound, the original Songwriter Showcase during Trop Rock Week, October 31st through November the 2nd at Rick's Dirty Harry's on Duval Street in Key West, Florida. Why would you go anywhere else? And now, Tiki Man Radio is proud to present the JBL Legends Travel Travel Moment with Joe Leo. Take it away, Joe. Good morning, everybody. Hi, this is Joe Leo with the JBL Travel Group. Happy Easter to all of you. I uh, hope you're having a great weekend there. I know that you're having a little uh, nice weather this weekend at the Jersey Shore, finally, after days and days and days of rain. However, this week on, on the Travel Minute, I want to talk about um, the country of Malta. Many of you might remember that when we did our Italy and Greece cruise uh, last year in September, that we one of the stops that we made was was uh, was Malta, and um, most of the people thought that it was part of of Italy and it was you know an extension of Sicily, and we came to of course find out that it is its own uh, country. So doing a little research on it because I've been sending a lot of clients there. It's a very attractive but uh, somewhat overlooked, and it's kind of been under the radar, um, a destination uh, that people just didn't know was there. Um, it's now rapidly becoming the go-to spot for luxury vacations. Um, and in recent years, it's caught the attention of a lot of media. Uh, there's been some new five-star properties that have uh, opened up there, new dining experience, including six Michelin uh, rated restaurants. Uh, it's been dubbed the um, Mediterranean's mini uh, mini Hollywood um, because of um, uh, it's attracting a lot of movie buffs from all over the world because it's best known for uh, film productions. Let me, let me just tell you a couple things. As a matter of fact, a lot of the tour guides that we met while we were in Malta. Uh, have played parts, you know, extras as extras in a lot of the productions. Um, they filmed um, Gladiator 2 there, which I think is coming out in November. Uh, Napoleon, which is up for three Academy Awards. Bachelor Nation, uh, the reality show, has filmed there. The Game of Thrones, uh, which is a popular HBO show, uh, has filmed in many, many multi locations. Uh, they actually. Um, they actually showcased Valletta, which is the capital and also UNESCO World Heritage Site, as well as Medina, the uh, uh, medieval walled city. So here's what we're finding. We're finding a lot of hotels there, uh, luxury hotels that are less than anywhere else in, in the Mediterranean. Uh, and we're talking about some very popular five-star big-name hotels that have actually made their home there. Gourmet Cuisine. Malta has uh, its food and its wine are getting a lot of attention. Uh, it's attracted fame, a lot of famed Michelin uh, chefs. And uh, the uh, Michelin Guide last year for 2023 included 35 restaurants in Malta, six that have earned Michelin stars. Uh, and our Maltese wines are also becoming very popular because they concentrate on farm-to-table wines linked to sustainability. 
and it's a growing trend for the past several years. In addition to that, cruise ships have the growth of cruise ships going to Malta has gone I, I, unbelievable. It has grown, as a matter of fact, from 2023, there was over 990,000 passengers that stopped in Valletta in Malta, uh, which was a 65% increase over 2022. It's always been a crucial and important uh, cruise port, but more and more of the cruisers are now starting to include it in their itineraries. And Malta is very proud of the fact that uh, of their sustainability efforts uh, for the cruise industry and also the hotels. So if you never thought about going to Malta, whether you just want to go there for, you know, uh, a land vacation or you want to take a cruise to stops in Malta, um, give me a call at, at the JBL Travel Group, 732-831-5200, and I'll be glad to give you some more information about it. And um, that's it. That's Joe Leo with this week's Travel Minute. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Happy Easter, and we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks, Joe. Always travel with someone you trust. JBL Legends Travel and Joe Leo. Reach out to him at 732-831-5200. The official travel company of Tiki Man Radio. Crystal King, and uh, Crystal will be coming up here momentarily. Uh, she just messaged that she's just running a tidbit late, so she should be chiming in here very, very soon. And, of course, uh, you said you had something to add there, Lou. I do. So, you know, last, was it last week, Joe was talking about taking those private um, private tours when you go on a cruise mm-hmm. and how important it is to make sure that you're back not just on time but early. Yeah. Case in point. 
Eight passengers um, were mm-hmm. stranded on an African island after their cruise ship left without them. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, so they, um, for whatever reason, they went on a, on a private excursion. There were six mm-hmm. U.S. citizens, two people from Australia. Not going to say the name of the cruise line because I'm trying to be nice. But um, they were supposed, they told their tour guide they needed to be back at a certain time because the ship was going to leave. Mm-hmm. They were late. The tour guide contacted the ship and said, hey, running a little bit late. I got eight of your people here. Don't leave. Mm-hmm. Well, by that time, the, the ship had already pulled away or was already closing up. Mm-hmm. Um, ended up, they basically, the ship left without the people. And apparently, those folks had to travel through seven different countries to catch up to their to their boat to <laughs> wow. get back on at the next port. So, Joe was not kidding. They will leave you. <laughs> well, and I guess that, that says that, that you also better make sure that you have some extra cash. Because right? I mentioned a trip through seven different countries to catch the cruise ship uh, wasn't cheap. Exactly. I imagine. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, I would just die. <laughs> um, and I guess one of the ladies was pregnant. Oh, my. Um, another one was um, handicapped, was a paraplegic. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was a, it was an adventure wow. for him for sure. They were not happy. But, um, yeah, so Joe was not lying. They will leave you. <laughs> Make sure you're back at the ship. Miss Patty Campbell, hello to you. Well, hello to Patty Campbell, the hardest working woman in show business. Yeah. <laughs> As Tiki Man says, it ain't easy being Patty Campbell. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited to see them this summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Larice, you're right. That is who the cruise line was. Um, <laughs> she heard the story. She heard the story. And uh, it really, the way the article reads, and I don't know how true it is, but the way the article reads, they tried three different times and three different ways to get on this ship while it was still in close enough to shore that they could take another boat out to the ship and they would not let them on there so um we will see um what happens with that but yeah okay the spokesperson for the cruise line said it was a very unfortunate situation but guests are responsible for ensuring they return to the ship at the published time. <laughs> That's a nice way of saying it. It's your own damn fault. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, they um, they made they had made arrangements to rejoin the ship, um, but then the ship was unable to safely dock at that location that they made arrangements because of adverse weather conditions. So then the guests were contacted and provided with information on how to rejoin the ship at or in Senegal on Tuesday. So seven countries in 48 hours to get to Senegal. And um, (laughs) they did make it back to the ship. Well, I think at that point in time, I'd have just said, screw it. I'm going home. That's what I'm saying. I'm done. They said the couple was reconsidering whether or not they wanted to rejoin the cruise. All right. Yeah. So nuts. Craziness. All right. I got the buzz in my ear. I do think uh, our guest has arrived. Let me get over here. Yay. I got to click a button or two and uh, go over here. And there she is. This is Crystal King. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Our small studio crowd giving you the applause. (laughs) <laughs> how are you how are you doing i'm doing fantastic you, you know running late as usual but fashionably late of course always <laughs> well i know how you celebrities are so you know you're running late you're running late you know it's fashionably late it's okay give us yeah, more time to talk yeah. about you I know. I was doing my my radio thing, and I literally was, like, leaving, stopped in the bathroom, had all my stuff with Mm -hmm. me, and then, of course, somebody sees me in the bathroom and tells me an awesome story, and I was like, well, crap. 
<laughs> and now she's so I ran in yeah. and did that real quick. Those bathroom conversations sometimes can be just a little awkward. Yeah. <laughs> girls, like girls in the bathroom, it's a it's a different level. You get deep real fast, and that's right. <laughs> well, well, Lou can see you and hear you. She, you just can't see her. So I'll be the ghost over Hi. here in the corner. Hey. <laughs> well, Pat, Miss Patty Campbell and Beth Travers both say they love you and hello. Oh, I love both of them. Tell them hello, hello. <laughs> Which, of course, you said the radio thing. Of now, I told them that you were the are you the weekend host at Radio Margaritaville, or has that changed? Are you on different shifts and stuff now? Nope, I'm on um, on the weekends. Um, so Saturdays and Sundays, ten to three. Um, but sometimes being a musician and being a weekend host on radio mm. kind of conflict. So on <laughs> on those occasions, I, I do. You know, not to ruin radio masterminds, but um, yeah, I do pre-record on those days. Okay, I, I won't tell the Tiki Man that uh, you—he's competing with you on the radio there. Says, uh, <laughs> you know, the big show's on from ten to one, so uh, <laughs> I, I won't tell him that uh, you're his competition. I, I will keep that between us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what else have you been up to? Oh goodness, so lots I'm, of recording, I'm still right? Out a what was that? I said lots of writing and recording, right? Yeah, all the things. So I, I finished up a seven song album a while back and it's mm -hmm. available on CD, um, but I've been kind of slowly putting that out. Mm -hmm. um, so the second song released in January and then the video released mid-February. Um, and we're working on the, the third release. We'll probably release about four songs um, prior to releasing the album, but um, also just wanted to put out something for my, my trap rock world. So we're doing kind of an exclusive radio release for that song. And, and we are so fortunate and glad that you sent it to us. And as soon as I heard it, I'm like, Oh, I got to get a hold of her. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but, uh, you know, I ha you know, after your, your, uh, last single there, uh, I just tapped out, is your husband okay? Yes, he's okay. He's okay. okay. And actually, that single hasn't come out yet. That oh. one will be the next one. Oh, that'll be the next one. Okay. Well, I was kind of concerned on House Fire. You know, I just wanted to make sure he was okay, but I guess he's in possibly some more danger coming up. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know why. I guess it's my therapy <laughs> to write, like, mean songs about my husband, even though he's he's really amazing. He's really great. But, yeah, so House Fire was pretty dark, and then uh, Mind Drone Backyard will be the next single. And, and that one, I murder him and bury him in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that almost ha has a earl's gotta go kind of feel huh right yeah yeah actually i think i sang that one live on y'all show i, was I think you did yep i um, think that I does think something that was the one that i accidentally said like what did i say i got tongue-tied oh yeah <laughs> i get tongue-tied a lot it's okay <laughs> yeah you and kirstie were got had quite a laugh over that one Oh yeah, like I don't think I think so I laughed funny. so hard I couldn't finish the song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got tomatoes. I was reading fried tomatoes and on the comments, and mm -hmm. then it like into I think I said fart. That was it. Yes, <laughs> that was it. I said if you were fart. Yeah. Would you say fart? And I I just lost it. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's okay. Everybody picks on me because I constantly put my foot in my mouth. Um, there's a lot of times where I'm putting my foot in my mouth and I'm having to buy Lou new stuff because I put my foot in that far <laughs> in my mouth. So, you know, so far she's gotten a popcorn machine out of me and she's got all kinds of stuff. A few trips. <laughs> a few trips. So okay. one of these days I'll have to learn how to quit putting my foot in my mouth. So. She knows how to work the system. I like that. Well, it doesn't That's help right. when uh, she has a bunch of people listening on this show that uh, also uh, back her up. Uh, Michelle Myers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The so, girl's got my back. Yeah. So it's okay. Uh, you know, putting your foot in your mouth every once in a while, you know, getting tongue tied. It's all part of the gig. <laughs> so. Uh, That's for sure. Yeah. So, like I said, you've been doing a bunch of writing, and like you just released this new song. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So, um, I met a fella named Greasy Joe, or G Joe Seaburger. Is well, we love Greasy we Joe. We love Joe. And I met him at Meeting of the Minds the very first year I went, so mm -hmm. two years ago. 
Um, and we just sort of stayed in touch and he was just so friendly. And I felt like every place we went and meeting the minds, I was running into this guy. Mm -hmm. um, so we just exchanged exchange numbers and we decided to, to try to write together. So this was kind of the product of the first first song. Um, and we kind of write together a little different than I, I do with most um, my Nashville co-writers and artists. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he kind of likes to, I think he does a lot of solo writing. So he kind of likes to like take it, us get started. And then he likes to kind of like take it and we split off and we both just write a bunch. Mm -hmm. And then we come back oh, wow. and try to like put it all together. Um, so that's what we did. And I, we really loved the song and he wanted to, to get it demoed. So he had a, a studio it, where he's from. Mm -hmm. um, and so he laid down the instruments and everything with them, sent it to me. I recorded the vocals, sent it back to him and he mixed and mastered it. Um, and it just turned out really good. So I was like, you know, I, I realized that with my album release, I wasn't really going to be able to put out anything like specifically for the trap rock community for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, this one was kind of ready to go so i was like you know what i love the song i'm just gonna go ahead and and send it out to radio and yeah joe's joe's been awesome love writing with him he's a great guy in general so hard worker yeah he's one of our ohio boys yeah. so well he's down in texas isn't he now oh yeah well yeah he's in texas but, but uh, we had him live in studio yeah. um was it two years ago now almost um, um he flew up yeah. from texas to yeah be live in studio with us and we had a great time with him and we actually were just talking about him last week yep um yep. he sent us a little sneak peek of one of the songs he's working on so we were yeah. pretty excited yeah we're I, when the first time we met him i'm like you know i was flabbergasted you know because he's like a real life top gun uh i don't know you know f-18 pilot yeah, and yeah. That's his call sign. i know greasy so greasy joe, joe is his call sign i'm, I'm like Wow, you know, real life Tom Cruise sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. So that's pretty awesome and very, very talented. And, uh, you know, and like you said, with the songwriting. So that was a new uh, kind of a new process uh, of writing that way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I kind of am in the same way. Like after I write with people, I'll like go home on my own because sometimes things just come to me in, you know, either a slower way or they just hit me randomly when I'm like mulling over it. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, I think we were both similar in that fashion of like, sometimes we have to like step away and then the ideas start rolling. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely different because, you know, Nashville, we're sort of like, we have not, not a time limit on the song. Like it's fine to like go back and, and write on it after mm -hmm. a ride or two. That's fine. Um, but definitely like, different in the fact that I feel like we kind of wrote separate more than together. Um, and, you know, just our timelines are different of like when mm -hmm. we get together to, to write on something, but it worked out really well and we had fun doing it. And it's just a, it's just a very clever song. Like we just had fun with like the wordplay and, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a wordy song, but the cadence was just kind of fun to play around with. Mm -hmm. and fit in all those those tropical imagery stuff in there now do you have more songs you've written together or is this the only one um we have another one that's like part way done um and i think we we just got to get together to squish it again um we were supposed <laughs> to to work on this month but i think it'll be next month but we have another one it's not this one's not a trap rock song though that we're working on will be on the new album that you're getting ready to put out then um, no, because it's not done. The album's already recorded. Oh, the album's you know. already recorded. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a release date for that? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. We're kind of just like... See, she's just going to tease us and then... I know. She's and let us sit little and pieces at a time. <laughs> yeah. So the next song will probably be late May, because um, I think I'm going to release it and the music video at the same time. And mm -hmm. cool. I still got to actually get the music video recorded. Um yeah, so we'll we'll go until that one kind of loses steam, and then we'll release another one, and then go till it releases loses steam, and then we'll finally release the album. Now, are you gonna do a video with this new song? <laughs> yeah, so we're working on that right now, like location and everything. Um, kind of got like a desperate housewives, you know, '60s feel to it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> now, did I see that you're gonna be down at the Parrot Head Rendezvous as well? Yes. I will be. I'm will super be. excited. We'll see you there for sure. Yeah, this month is full of travel. Um, 
So I'm, I'm here doing like a local show this week. Next week I have a show in North Carolina. Then we have the Panama City Rendezvous. And then the last week of the month I'll be in uh, Kentucky. Oh, wow. So what di- when are you performing at the Rendezvous? Um, April 20th. Um, and I'm not, I don't remember my times off the top of my head, but I'll be performing with Kirsty Krause. So we'll be performing as a duo. And I think we have two um, duo acoustic slots there. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So Kirsty will be back from uh, over across the pond then, by then, hopefully, yes, then, right? Yes, she will be back. She'll probably be exhausted and <laughs> very much jet lagged, but she will be back. And um, yeah, we'll be, be performing that one together. So that's super exciting. I know I've talked to her a couple times since she's been over there, and it sounds like she's having the time of her life. So that's, yeah, a, that's a good so thing. Have you been, ever been over there? I have not, no. I have not. Uh, definitely, you know, something I will eventually want to do, but um, just wasn't wasn't quite time yet. And she's been working on that that trip for like two years. Like since mm-hmm. we started touring together, this is something mm-hmm. she's been talking about and working towards. So um, she's done a lot of behind the scenes heavy lifting for to make this happen. That's well, awesome. Well, now you know, have somebody that's already worked out all the ins and outs and knows what they're doing. Yeah, so, so when you're ready to do it, it'll go flawlessly, else, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have we do have a question from one of our listeners. Um, Callie wants to know which Jimmy Buffett song inspires you the most. Oh man, that's a tough one. It is, right? Oh yeah. Um so one of my favorites is just a quirky one like it's nothing like super deep but it's my husband's favorite jimmy buffett song and i have always really liked it and i think it very much like hits on my my quirky songwriting skills um but me or um, i will play for gumbo is one of my favorites (laughs) that's Um, a good song but another one is actually i really like beach house on the moon which i think he dedicated that one to his son um but I think it's just such a clever song and it's just like plays on that imagination piece of, you know, just like that kind of fairy tale, um, just really cool imagery imagery, and just a, a nice song. So I think those two are probably two of my favorites. Definitely extremes and different songs, but mm-hmm. um, I like those two. So you obviously being on Radio Margaritaville, you play a lot of Jimmy Buffett and you're getting to know his music really, really well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm definitely I'm still learning and I will be the first to admit that. But um, but I've always always been a Jimmy Buffett fan. Um, But I kind of got introduced to Jimmy probably through my love of Alan Jackson. And when Uh they started doing their collaborations together, um, you know, I would, I, since I was always just a country girl, I would see him collaborate with a lot of people. And then Mm -hmm. I'd be like, who's this guy? Like, um, and then kind of delved into his stuff a little bit more. Um, and then especially just over the past few years, kind of getting involved in the, the parrot head community and playing them at radio Margaritaville, but it's so much fun from the radio aspect to kind of learn about him because you know, I, I learn about him in like a deeper way than I guess most artists mm-hmm. um, and really delve into, you know, past concerts and um, his songwriting process. And so it's just been cool really learning about him in that way. Did you ever have the opportunity yes. to meet him? What was that? Did you ever have the opportunity to meet him? I did not, unfortunately. Um, you know, that was something I was really excited about when I got the job was like, <laughs> oh man, like what, if, like I'm going to get to go to concerts and go meet him and all this stuff, hopefully. Um, but unfortunately he passed before I actually started um, mm. this job. So it was never, it just never was in the cards. Um, but it is cool talking to like Kirsten and Coleman mm. who are part of the section and have gotten to meet him and knew him and were friends with him. And so it's just been cool hearing things from their perspective. Um, I was hired before he passed, um, mm-hmm. and then whenever he passed, they, you know, they obviously were mourning at the station, and mm-hmm. they were reshuffling around the format because just some of the old stuff didn't feel quite right. Mm-hmm. Um, so they they were changing some things around, so it actually delayed my my start date a little bit. Um, but that was okay, and it's been mm-hmm. just 
sounds like he surrounded himself by great people. So it's been fun getting to know some of them. Yeah, I remember I seen him in an interview when you talk about, you know, Alan Jackson, where he, he made a joke and said he's one of my most popular songs isn't even mine. <laughs> so because a lot of people associate Five O'Clock Somewhere as being Jimmy's and a lot, a lot of people don't realize that it's actually Alan's song that Jimmy appeared yeah. on. So, yeah. yeah. but uh, yeah, well, Alan was always like my my hero and, you know, still is. Oh, yeah. Um, and in that 90s vein of country, like, I don't think he wrote Five O'Clock Somewhere either. I think someone else. Yeah, did, I don't think but, he wrote it, but he performed um, it. But Alan wrote most of his own songs, which was mm -hmm. super cool. Um, just because in the 90s, like artists were, you know, they did write their own songs, mm -hmm. but it wasn't as common, you know, song right. shopping was definitely more of a thing. It's almost more, it's almost a requirement for the newer folks trying to get into country music now, it yeah. seems. Yeah, like writing is definitely a big, um, a big thing. And even if you're not like a writer, they they still usually expect you to kind of be in the room At and least participate in the process these days. Right, right. Well, hey, you got we got this new song, "Me Myself and Islands." How about I put you in the green room? We'll play it, and then we'll come back to you. And then let everybody chime in and let you let them know what you they think about it and if they have any questions or anything like that. Yay, wonderful. Thank you. All right. I'm going to put you back over here in the green room. And uh, all right. Let me click my buttons and get back over here. All right. So here we go. The Tropical Country debut of Me, Myself, and Islands. Here's Crystal King. Well, I told him damn right when he said it's not you, it's me. So now I'm taking a heartbreak away from reality. Don't need a good cry, don't want it fast, heart pass on sympathy. I'll stake a claim on every single rum any bottle till we're wheels down in the knee. I've never 
them are satisfied with the tan on my toes and a brand new horizon. Just be myself and <laughs> Absolutely love that. And, and you know, listening to that, I can hear that Greasy Joe in there. Oh yeah, yeah, you can hear that influence yep. for sure. Well, he, and he's actually singing harmonies on there too. Um, oh, okay. Awesome. There, he's there. literally in there. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, he has that style too, and like you said, with that cadence, and it mm -hmm. and it does. It's it's just something that sounds familiar. So. Uh, I can definitely hear that in there. That is awesome. It's a it's a good song that you can you very quickly pick it up and can sing along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which yep, I think is one like of the signs of a, yeah. I, I think yeah. that's one of the signs of a great song. So, and that song is out now and, and able to be purchased. Is that correct? It is not. Oh, no. no. So I am sending it just to Truck Rock Radio. Just um, to okay. So it's it's not available for purchase or streaming or anything yet. Oh, it's I just a radio to. single. Yeah. So all you out there, nee, 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 nee. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, eventually, but it just mm. felt kind of weird to put out that in the middle of like my album rollout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted really badly to put out something for the trap rock community because I've just gotten so involved over the past few years. Yeah. Um, but I was like, well, I want to, I want to be part of all this. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, Trop Rock and Coastal community absolutely loves you. Yes. And of course, yeah. you know, you're the perfect blend for us. You know, the country and the coastal. So, uh, you know, we love, love the fact that you know you, you're able to make time for us to come on the show. Short notice at that. So thank you so much for that too. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I think I sent y'all. I mean, y'all were on it. I sent y'all the song yesterday, <laughs> and y'all were like, "All right, we're playing it." And I was like, "I mean, I, I guess. Wait, yeah, sure. Let's do it." <laughs> I was like, "I'll do my best to promote on short notice," but I'm glad I was able to to fill in and yeah, fill this slot and while we're able to play the song. Well, you know, I always learn if you snooze, you lose. So you when when you have the opportunity, you have to jump on it, or you may not have that opportunity. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I very much appreciate it. Well, that is awesome. So you, you already told us that, you know, what you got coming up. Uh, where can people go uh, to get all the information of where you're going to be and what you got coming up and news as far as, you know, when you're going to be uh, releasing all this stuff? Yeah, so um, go to my website's kind of my one-stop shop. So it's my, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> No, you're good. That train run right through the living room. <laughs> hey, um, and then I'm on all the all the social media and everything. So mm -hmm. I'll I'll be posting, you know, whenever I'm releasing stuff and mm -hmm. all that good things. And like you said, I'll be at Rendezvous um, in April. And then um, I'm trying to think what other Parrothead events. I'll be at Biloxi Box Set and uh, Drop Dead Dangerous, their Beach Bash. Oh, awesome. Uh, very nice. Yeah, all those all those things. Give us the website one more time. We had a train. Since that there. train ran, you know, <laughs> ran over top of you there. Um, CrystalKingMusic.com and Crystal with a K. Awesome. And then, of course, you're on Facebook and all the social medias. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Crystal Instagram. King Music is pretty much the one-stop shop for everything. Nice. See, just like that, I told you, stuff happens. You just got to learn to roll with it. <laughs> roll with so it. I... I again, I always told the team, you know, what could possibly go wrong? Spend 10 minutes with me. You will find out what could possibly go wrong. Just don't take yourself too seriously. Never. No. Exactly. I mean, I'm, no. I'm pretty sure I've walked on stage with, like, toilet paper out of my pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've just gotten to the thing of I honestly think people just tune in to see what I'm going to screw up this week. <laughs> just own it. That's uh, right. I, I do my best. I do my best. <laughs> so, uh, anything, uh, any other questions out there you had or anybody else had comments? No, but I do have a lot of people chiming in saying mm -hmm. they love the song. Um, yeah. Lots of hand clapping, 
smiles. Um, and Maureen says, it's always good to hear Crystal. Um, and she is absolutely right. Yeah. You're, you have such a beautiful tone to your voice. Such a There are, mm-hmm. and I hate to say this, but there are some female singers that are amazingly talented, but I can only listen for so long because of the, the, just the tone of their voice in my ear. Um, but yours is one I can listen to for hours. Um, so, yeah, I mean, honestly, your voice is just amazing. You have such a, a really cool tone. And it sounds a, just a little bit different with every song. Mm-hmm. Um, you make every song your own for sure. I love that. That's, you know, that's always a goal of mine is I never want my stuff to just sound all all alike. So yeah. I try my best to, you know, either put my stamp on it or, or even in my own stuff i try to make it all sound a, a little bit different to have some variety yeah and it really does and and beat will tell you there are times where he'll play a song and be like you know we play this game with each other who is this <laughs> who's singing this and there are some times when i don't even realize that it's you um because it, your voice just sounds a little bit different so you are definitely accomplishing that goal yeah because the first time i got her on that uh was uh on the song that i played before you came in uh you had me at double wide I played yeah. that, and she's like, who sings that? I'm, I'm like, like, I love that song. And I'm like, that's Crystal. And she's like, no. And I'm like, yeah, she's I love that <laughs> yeah. song. Well, and I feel like my voice has changed a lot since then, too, because that was like, what, two, I don't know, mm-hmm. no, it was much longer than that. It was like four years, yeah. four or five years ago yeah. now. But I love that song, because I've always told, you know, told everybody, you know, Lou was the queen of my double wide trailer. So, <laughs> yeah, when that came up, I'm like, here we go. And uh, so, but now I have to change that, because we moved, we moved from the country, and and uh, moved here to the burbs. <laughs> yeah. The burbs. Well, but. we we moved out of our town home, and you know we were almost we were like we might have to get a double wide because we can't afford we're a single wide maybe mm-hmm. uh, right. We a house and bought a house and we got this beautiful yard and we're like our dog's gonna love it. Our dog could care less. <laughs> <laughs> well, for us it was kind of the reverse. We uh, we became empty nesters. All the kids are the house, and we're like, we got to hurry up and move before they try to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it didn't work because the one moved right right across the way from us. So same apartment <laughs> complex. Same, par- same <laughs> complex we're in. So. You know, we didn't get very far from them, but... Uh, and now you they don't have a spare bedroom. You know, you have your nice, beautiful studio. Yeah. Exactly. And Lou works from home, so one of the bedrooms is her home office, and the other one is this big studio. So, yeah, we're like, sorry, no guest rooms, <laughs> no, you know... Yeah. Our, our, both of our guest rooms are music rooms, so... Oh, there you go. We even made sure that we bought a couch that was not comfortable to lay on. So you can sit on it, but you can't lay on it because it's just not comfortable. So, you know, we didn't want to give them any ideas that, hey, this may work out. <laughs> but, well, we thank you so much, like I said, for taking the time to spend with us, letting us uh, hear the new music. And, uh, of course, uh, it will be right here in the rotation uh, on I'm in the radio station because I know Tiki Man, was he was messaging with you last night, and he's Crystal's got a new song. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I got it. And he goes, you got it? And I'm like, yes, yeah, she's going to be on the show, too. <laughs> he was like, what? Well, I'm, I'm like, glad he's going to play it. So, yeah, and that's what I mean by, you know, you can't snooze or you'll lose. Because, you know, the Tiki Man, he's usually all over it. So I got to get up early if I'm going to try to get one over the Tiki Man. <laughs> So he's not chiming in yet tonight. So, but I have a feeling the comment will be coming for too long. But, uh, <laughs> but again, thank you. Hurry up, put some dirt on him real quick. <laughs> no, I won't do that on the boss. I don't want to. Kind of like the job. I don't want to get fired yet. <laughs> uh, we love you, Danny. Well, and and we love you. Everybody loves you. We look forward to seeing you down in Panama City. We look forward to the release of this album. Uh, no date yet. We just got to stay tuned, right? Yep. Sorry. Have you even got a name for it yet? Um, it's called Pretty Poison. Pretty Poison. Oh, I love that. Now, is there going to be a track to go with that title? There is. Nice. There is. It's the last one. It's probably the weirdest one. It's not. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's speaking of different. It's very different. Wow. Um. <laughs> That's cool, though. Yeah. And so everybody can, so they can get the singles that you've had released off the album so far. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to be releasing a couple more and then the whole album, right? Yes. So everybody yeah. needs to stay tuned in to all of Crystal's socials. 
her website, all of that stuff, so that you can know when the next single is dropping. That's right. And you cannot get me, myself, and Islands. You're just going to have to stay tuned to Tiki Man Radio to be able to hear that one. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, we are going to let you go again. Thank you so much for uh, jumping in here. You are welcome. Whenever you're in the area, let us know. We want to get you here in the studio so we can spend some more time with you. you got another, and if it's not show night, still let us know. Yes. We'll hang out. It don't matter if it's a show night or not. Just come in and hang out. And, uh, margaritas. Absolutely. There you go. Absolutely. That's the other thing she's been on. She wants a margarita maker. So, Oh, yeah. I'll probably put my foot in my mouth and she'll probably get that before too long. <laughs> <laughs> yep yep <laughs> uh -huh. i was trying to think of, like some plan to help her out but i, I have to think on it oh yeah. yeah crystal's gonna have my back too now <sighs> all right well <laughs> she almost had one i did actually buy her one but uh it didn't arrive so uh, that was one of them ones of called amazon i'm like um it's been shipped for like a month is it ever going to arrive and they're like yeah, we're just going to refund you on that. So she she missed out. <laughs> I did. So, and I haven't got one since. I haven't no. ordered another one since. So she'll have to wait until I put my foot in my mouth again. That's right. All right. <laughs> well, it, I do have a couple more things for you, Crystal, before we let you go. Yeah. Um, Miss Beth Travers says, thanks for being on, Crystal. Looking forward to writing in Nashville and see you at Panama City. Yay, she's awesome. Love mm. Beth. Yeah. Um, and Mo says... They take bets on which foot you will put in your mouth in each show, honey. Um, oh, we're down to which foot I'm going to put in there. Right. Um, and one last quick question for you. Um, Callie says he sees all the instruments um, behind you on the wall. Oh, yes. What instruments do you play, and which one is your go-to instrument for creating a song? Oh, that's a good question. Um, that is a yeah, good question. Guitar is definitely my go-to Um I, I play a little bit of piano, but I'm not like you don't want me to perform on that. Um, <laughs> but I had to pass piano proficiencies in college, so I, I have done that. Um, and I used to play flute in band. Oh, cool. Um, and I met my husband in high school band camp, actually. Um, <laughs> oh, well, how fun. One time at band camp? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I got the, the fiddle and the mandolin because they're kind of like the same notes, essentially, but, mm. you know, Play them differently mm -hmm. um and i'm the goal is to learn them but i have failed so far on doing that um <laughs> <laughs> you know only so many hours in a day um and the other is just decorative um i mean you don't play that banjo no i don't play the banjo there's and there's all my country music pictures minus the cat and the hat <laughs> cool i like that one <laughs> that that um, is a pretty cool room you have there we have my husband's a, a drummer, so we have his drum set and uh, marimba. That's his. Oh, how fun! Yes. So, we going to be able to? Is he going to be playing with you anytime soon? Does he play in your band or? So he does drum with me. Um, sometimes when I play solo, he'll drum with me, or sometimes if I play with a band, he'll be my drummer. Um, he played with me in North Carolina for a band show a couple of weeks ago, um, and he's going to actually be playing with me this weekend. Um, but unfortunately he is a teacher, um, by, by trade and he's a, he's a music teacher, okay. um, but that does mean that his travel flexibility isn't mm. as flexible or just as, you know, he, yeah. he can't travel except for during his breaks. Gotcha. That's why Callie has all those good questions. He's a teacher over there in California and, uh, I just work at the school. I don't, I don't try to teach anybody anything. So <laughs> matter of fact, they don't want to listen to me. <laughs> so, well, again, thank you. So I'm going to let you go. We've taken up enough of your time. I know you're running late getting there from work. So you're probably wanting to be able to, to, uh, kick your feet up and try to catch up with your husband for the day. <laughs> so, so thank you so much again. Thank you for letting us, uh, sending us that music. Uh, I'm going to be putting it right over here in my little rotation that I have that I play before every week. So it'll be in there. And I know Tiki Man's going to be adding it here uh, to his. And uh, you may be hearing from him. And he'd be like, hey, I can top that. You come over to my show. Come on, the big show. So I, I, <laughs> I have a feeling that call will be coming for you. Perfect. All right. Wow. And, and then uh, and in the meantime, if they don't catch you on a concert and everything, they can uh, also tune in to Radio Margaritaville on the weekends and hear you as well. Yes. All right. 
Well, we Thanks, will see. Thank you, Lou. Thanks she, for stopping she, she's by. Waiting. One of these days, I'm going to get that second camera over there so <laughs> she can have that. But yeah, uh, you have to show her off. <laughs> well, I, I told her she could come over here and just do the whole thing, and she's like, "No, no." She rather just sit over there and, and be the uh, fly in the wall and just throw a comment <laughs> in every once in a while. There we go. All right. Well, we will see you later, and uh, we'll see you down in Panama City here in a couple of weeks. Okay. Be there. All right. Thanks, care, Crystal. Steve. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. So let me Ms. get Crystal King. Yes. The one and only, the legend. <laughs> yeah, right. she is so talented. Yeah. Let me get over here to the right one. Miss <laughs> Donna is losing her battery. So good. Oh no. Donna. Get the cord. Get the cord. Get the cord. Stat. Get the cord. Plug it in. <laughs> yeah, Callie really did have some great questions he does. there. So thank he you. He is for a those. professional. He is. That's why those kids are all over it. You know, I'm just an amateur winging my way through. So. Right. Well, yeah. you know, I was going to, I know we were trying to tell Crystal by we were going to let her go, but that was such a good question. It was. Um, it, it really was. And, and I love it when people chime in with more questions because, yeah. you know, because here's the thing, you know, you know, we know Crystal and, you know, we, we've sat and had a lot of conversations and everything. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, we get caught up just having the conversation. You kind of forget about, oh, I'm doing an interview here and. And uh, you don't think of the, some of those questions. So yeah. that is that's a that's great. So, you know, of course, uh, Callie is teaching those kids out there in California how to do it that's right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I tell you, I said that we have a bunch of uh, new music, and we're uh, quickly time is running down. So how about we just start jumping into this new music? Absolutely. So, all right. Well, I told you, Kitty Stedman has a brand new single out uh, off of her debut solo album and uh this one is called the uh, davy is the uh title track and uh, it's a truck driver's daughter <laughs>
Allen from Memphis, Tennessee. I love tuning in to Tropical Country with Big Dog and Lou every Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern on Tiki Man Radio. Hey, y'all, this is Big Dog. And Lou. From Tropical Country right here on Tiki Man Radio. Next time you take a trip down to the Key West and you want to get out on the water, we want you to check out our sponsor, Goaltending Services. Goaltending Services is the premier charter service in Key West. They offer a wide range of amenities. Goaltending Services is also a veteran-owned company, and they take care of their veterans and active duty personnel by offering a 25% discount with your veteran or military ID. For more about Goaltending Services, give them a call at 305-916-0990 or look them up online at goaltendingservices.com guitar in the back seat with a suitcase of clothes a couple of heartbreaks on her sleeve but she had a pocket full of songs and dreams didn't have a plan but she was gone soul searching looking for a bigger sky full of brighter stars someday she wants to climb up a mountain and then sail around the ocean no one can last oh this wild horse on the run she's chasing the sun all over the world she's a coastal cowgirl a coastal She fell in love with the small town city But the people in the neon lights let her down too many times It took a couple winters to figure out The roots were outgrowing that town And she rolled away without saying goodbye No, looking for She wants to climb up a mountain and then sail around the ocean. No one can last all oh, this wild horse on the run. She's chasing the sun all over the world. She's a coastal cowgirl. A coastal cowgirl. to climb up the mountain and then sail around the ocean no one can last oh this wild horse on the run she's chasing the sun all over the world she's a coastal cowgirl mm, a coastal Cowgirl, that is Aubrey Wallet, and of uh, course, before that was Kitty Stedman with the uh, truck driver's fa- uh, daughter. So you're I, on, you're on. I love both of those songs. <laughs> I know that the Kitty's is a rocking, and and uh, Aubrey's is just kind of takes you back and mellows you out a little oh. bit. So 
That was kind of a perfect there. It was. So, and of course, uh, Kitty's uh, new album is available now wherever uh, you buy or stream uh, music. And Aubrey's new song is coming out in two days, in April 5th. It'll be available for everybody to uh, buy and stream. And then uh, as far as other new music, uh, Kirsty Krause and Christy Huff, their song Dabba Dolly is now available yes. uh, for purchase and streaming as well. So a lot of new music out there from all the folks and uh, that we like to call friends, isn't there? There is, and I love that. I think that... Um you know, it's springtime. It is. The, the time for new stuff. Um, and so there's always a lot of new music coming out this time of year. Mm -hmm. And this time it's really good music. Yeah. A lot of that. Uh, it is the season for a lot of new uh, summertime and beach and kind of, you know, our, our kind, kind of music. music. <laughs> so it is the season. So I'm looking forward to a lot of that new music. So That's right. And there's new music coming out. Um, if y'all watch American Idol, mm -hmm. we talked the other day about Loretta Lynn's granddaughter. Yes. Her name is Emmy Russell. Um, she performed on American Idol the other night um, another one of her songs. And she actually had a, a really hard time doing it because the person that was up right before her sang, You Ain't Woman Enough to Take My Man. Oh. Which, of course, is Loretta's song yeah and so it really brought up some emotions in emmy mm -hmm. um, and i've talked to a couple of folks that we know from around nashville mm -hmm. everybody says what an amazing sweet kind hearted talented person emmy is mm -hmm. and you know anytime and i love it that she's not trying to make it on her grandma's name right she you know there was a big thing when she auditioned the other day that she's not you know at first she tried to kind of mimic her grandma mm -hmm. um, and now she's staying more true to herself and it's two different types of country music it's two different lanes and she really is a talented person and i always love it when i get confirmation that somebody is truly as nice as they seem to be right um and because certainly we've met some that uh, they weren't as nice as not. their reputation was <laughs> or, or, or what they appear to be on camera absolutely but everybody that i have talked to that has met and knows emmy um talks about what a sweetheart she is and actually i saw on i believe it was katrina burgoyne mm -hmm. um she is actually friends with emmy oh very cool. um and she was saying what a sweetheart emmy is um well maybe we have to try to get emmy in here Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, but the you know the other thing is is depend upon how far she makes it on the show. Idol's gonna uh, own her for a little she, bit. She uh, American Idol is going to own her for at least the I think the first twelve months after yep. they appeared on the show. Uh, yeah, so, they have to sign a contract. Um, so it may be a, a minute, but uh, who yeah. knows? Who knows what happens? So right. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess whenever she was listening to her grandma's song, she got pretty emotional. She sang, and I misspoke. She sang an original for her audition. Okay. Um. And then the other night she sang More Hearts Than Mine by Ingrid Andress. Okay. Um, which That's I a beautiful song. love that song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it was, it was really cool. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. So if y'all have a chance, check out Emmy Russell. Um, right now she's on Idol, but she's been around Nashville and singing and doing things um, for a long time. And mm -hmm. she used to... I. I saw some pictures, um, and I knew that Loretta used to bring some of her family on stage with her. And when Emmy was little, and I'm talking like five or six, mm -hmm. um, Loretta would bring her on stage and have her sing with her grandma on stage. Oh, so, cool. yeah, so I just think that that's really cool. Um, yes, absolutely, Callie. And when she came into her audition on American Idol, the coolest thing to me was she came in and she was literally like this little church mouse she was so quiet so timid mm -hmm. and she you know most people walk in there and say hi i'm so and so from so and so and this is how what i am she was just very and all of the judges were like what i can't hear you mm -hmm. and so finally just them working with her by the time her audition was over and they were saying who are you and just listening to the confidence mm -hmm. that came through in her voice Mm -hmm. From the time she walked into the door to the time that they told her, 
um, was just yeah. amazing. So yeah, because I don't think she offered up uh, who she was no. at the beginning, and I think wasn't it Luke that actually picked up something? And he, yeah, and, and he goes. She said, I grew up singing with my grandma. Yeah, I grew up singing with my grandma. Um, and he was like, well, who's your grandma? And she said, Loretta Lindy. But I think he about fell out of his chair. He did. And so, <laughs> yeah. And so did Katy Perry. Um, yeah. and, and Lionel, of course. Everybody knows mm -hmm. who Loretta Lynn is. Absolutely. And Lionel gave her one of the, the biggest compliments of, you know, thank you for doing your original song. And I am so glad that you're not trying to be a replica of your grandma. You are your own person. And... You know, she she's staying in in a whole separate lane. And oh, how cool! Yeah, so it was really cool. They call um, Lionel. I can't remember. Um, I cannot remember her the line, but she there was. They call Lionel something with Papa Lionel, or I don't know, because he just has the coolest advice and the coolest things that he mm -hmm. says. And Patty Campbell said, "Well, he is the most seasoned artist out of all of them on that panel." Yeah, yeah, he really is. <laughs> um, Patty Campbell says she was just telling Tim about her um, tonight. She has a great voice. She really does. Mm -hmm. She really does. Um, and it was interesting to me when they started talking about, you know, because of course they did a flash of Emmy, kind of giving the tour of Loretta Lynn's ranch and and right. things and. Just hearing her talk about the shadow that's cast by someone that is that huge mm -hmm. um, in the music industry and then trying to break into it. You know, you would think she's Loretta Lynn's daughter. She's her granddaughter. She's got it made. She can, yep. you know, and she's go. paying her dues just like everybody. Absolutely. Else. She's paying her dues. She has been paying her dues for a long time. And she almost gave up on singing and, and sh because she's been focusing on songwriting. Mm -hmm. over the last couple years so i just thought that that was an interesting story and it was interesting to me again just because she knows people mm -hmm. doesn't give her a leg up um, right. like you would think so as a matter of fact in her case the shadow was so huge that it kind of held her back a little bit for a while so hmm. it's nice to see her step out in the spotlight where she yeah. needs to be yeah, and uh, other new music's coming out. Our buddy Craig Campbell's releasing yes. new music, and I thought it was kind of cool um, that he is releasing music uh, yeah. that influenced him when he was trying to make it in the uh, country music world. And, and one of my favorite his first single artists. is a Clint Black killing time yeah. and i think that is going to be the name of the album that he's putting out I isn't it i believe that's what he said yeah yeah so uh and that's the first singles killing time yep and uh matter of fact i just saw a tiktok clip with him singing with clint uh yeah. there tonight too so uh, but how cool is that that uh, some uh, he's gonna redoing some of the 90s songs that was his influence you know, of course, you know, he he made it to, you know, the point of having that record deal and everything. And then, you know, just as easy as, you know, it, it's hard to get, but very easy to lose. Well, and, and so and he is another one that talked about how happy he didn't realize it at the time that it was a blessing in disguise. But now he can do what he wants to oh, do. He, when he wants to do he's it. He's loving being an independent and, artist. Yeah. And he, yeah. he is uh, very, very vocal about, uh, you know, how uh, thankful he is. And he goes, you know, again, when he when we interviewed him there, he goes, the only thing, thing you need that label for is money. Exactly. And right. he goes, I don't need that. So he's, just, you know, he, he loves that, having all that creative freedom to do all the things that he's doing yep. and go where he wants, record what he wants. And he's definitely having fun. And if you don't follow him on TikTok, Oh my goodness! You, you'll get a laugh every once in a while, and sometimes you'll just get a cringe. It's like, yeah. oh, <laughs> because you just never know what he's going to do. What was the one he did? He ended up in a speedo, and I was oh, like, it, oh, it, Craig. It no. was it was a black leather speedo <laughs> with yeah. a cowboy hat and his aviators no. with his cop stash. Yeah, just and no. it, yeah, it was like, oh, Craig, why'd you do that? But just but no. it, it was all it was all in good fun. It, it was a joke. Yeah. yeah, and everything, but yeah, you said you'll never know when you follow his TikTok what you're gonna see. But, Good uh, lord! But well, uh, his album, I just looked it up. Okay. It, is, it is actually called the Class of '89. The Class of '89. That's a good year. It is a good year. That's the year I graduated. <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah. You're a year behind me. I'm a '90 girl. <laughs> Last class of the '80s. Yep. 
Well, well, we're, right, we're getting near close to the end here, and uh, before we do, we got to let you know what's coming up here on Tiki Man Radio. Here's your weekly lineup for Tiki Man Radio. Sundays, it's the big show. Sunday mornings with the Tiki Man starting at 10 a.m. Eastern Island Time. Streaming live on the Island J Live Cam from the Chocolate Bar Studios in Harrison Bay. Come over and be part of the show. After the big show, it's Tuesday on the Island Replay with B-Man and Michelle. Recorded live from Key West. Later that afternoon, it's 5 o'clock somewhere with Rick the Stick. You never know where he's going to pop up. On the road with Rick the Stick starting at 5 p.m. Eastern Island Time every Sunday. Mondays from 6 to 8 p.m. Get on the peace train with Ed the Train Man live from Crown Point, Indiana. Tuesday at noon, it's Surf's Up with Callie McCool and the student crew. Tiki Man Radio's internship from Antioch High School in California. The kids are learning how to produce and do their own show. Compliments of Tiki Man Radio. It's the Lunchbox Special with Surf's Up every Tuesday at noon, Eastern Island Time. Wednesdays, it's where the boots meet the beach with Tropical Country with B-Dog and Lou. Streaming live on the MFG Tropical Live Cam from the Chocolate Bar Studios from 7 to 9 p.m. Make sure you catch the Friday kickoff with Jen Shin from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Friday. Jen kicks off the weekend and tells you all the activities coming up on Tiki Man Radio and spotlights all of our sponsors. That's the Friday kickoff with Jen Shin every Friday from 11 to 1 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Friday starting at 8 p.m., it's Coastal Confession. Sessions with Big Man and Michelle from the Beachy Shell Studios in Key West. Live every Friday, having some fun with their friends and sharing great music. Saturdays, take a trip back in time with Jukebox Saturday mornings starting at midnight and going to noon. This is where we open up the massive archives of the radio station and take you back to that old shagging music. That's your weekly lineup for Tiki Man Radio. Make sure you tune in to all these great shows and keep listening to Tiki Man Radio and have some fun. That's right. Have some fun for God Minnelli. That's right. That is right. So uh, anything else that uh, you have over there? I want to give a big shout out to one of my best friends in the whole world, Kelly Van Dyne. Hey, Kelly. She said she's been tuning in. She got to catch the last hour this week. So oh, hello. very nice. Very nice. Give so the kids hugs for me. She got to catch the lovely uh, Crystal King. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, again, we want to thank Crystal uh, for taking the time, like I said, very short notice uh, to jump in and be on tonight's show. Yeah. I um, know we told everybody that Dave was yes. going to be here tonight. Um, there was some issues with travel and mm. weather. Yeah, um, the, the weather last all of night. All the tornado just, stuff. Yeah, all the weather put put everybody behind. Yeah. Obviously, he couldn't travel with the weather, which put it. So he had to pretty much uh, drive, uh, get straight to Nashville instead um, instead of being able to stop over and spend right. this evening with us. So, but uh, he is going to come back. Yes, because he he does have new music that he's working on. So uh -huh. as soon as that is done, he will uh, be here and uh, be able to debut and perform it for us. So yeah, I just uh, wanted to we're excited about that. I don't want everybody to think we're lying. Uh, well, no, <laughs> I, I I did. I put it on the the, oh, po good. the post okay. that. Uh, that uh, due to the weather, he was unable to be here. But uh, we, uh, and Chris, Dave, if you're listening, yeah. we did miss you. Yes, we did. And but uh, Crystal, she was a champ. So boom, she jumped she right said, in. I got you. I got you, and <laughs> she's right on there. So well, thanks again for uh, Crystal for doing that. Uh, on a programming note, I guess we have to apologize for an announcement that we made here last week uh, about the Sunday show. <laughs> uh, no, John Schneider was not on the Sunday show. Man was doing an early, uh, an April early April Fools. Fool's joke on us, and he was going to tell us before the end of the show that it was a joke, but he says he forgot. Yeah. So we left you all thinking that John Schneider was going to be on the Sunday show, <laughs> but uh, he wasn't. But that's he okay. Wasn't. But he had a fantastic guest anyway. That's right. Mr. <laughs> Andrew Dean. That's right. And of course, we had such a great time with him and his wife. I know. Such I sweethearts. Know. And of course, you know, they left the Sunday show and went to Ohio. And look what they got into up there with all right? that weather. I know. Uh, that's crazy. So yeah. uh, hopefully they are all well as also. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll get him back down this way and have him come on the show where you play some more. And uh, that's right. You know, do things like that. So, and we just but, said all that did was just make mm -hmm. us more determined determined to try to get yeah. John on this show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cuz He said to go ahead. So, he, we got the he's a, more power to you if you can do it. <laughs> but but you know, during that, you know, uh talking to Andrew, I'm like, "Can I ask you a question?" I said, "Do you even know John Schneider?" And he goes, "Well, yeah, I I know John." And his wife's like, "I got him right here on my phone." And I'm like, 
really? And she he goes, yeah, but we know this guy better. And she holds it, holds this phone up. Yeah. And it, was, it was Tom Wolpat. And I'm like, she said, we actually know him better than John. I'm like, seriously? Listen. I'm Owen like, Luke how Luke. about a Dukes of Hazzard reunion oh, right here imagine? on Tropical Country? So maybe you we, imagine? You imagine we get Bo Luke and Daisy, right? Right. Sitting, You're just one Daisy. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> She ranks up there with Laura Bell Bundy. <laughs> Daisy was my first love. That is so true. So she, she was the first. And you never forget your first. But <laughs> Daisy was my first love. So, That's right. So even though I had a Farrah Fawcett uh, poster on my wall, <laughs> I didn't know what love was when I had that poster. It wasn't until, <laughs> until I saw Daisy crossing the road in the bikini that I knew what love was. Stopping him, holding on to her suitcase <laughs> that, and waving. That's right. I, I knew right then and there <laughs> I was in love. <laughs> uh, no. So my life and my life was never the same. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a lie either. <laughs> That would be a dream, wouldn't it, Callie? Can you imagine? Yeah. Maybe we'll have to uh, talk to Andrew and we'll have to, you know, use connections and pull some strings. That's right. Because we also have another friend who is very close connected to John. Yeah. And uh, and we actually talked to him about coming up here and being on the show. Yep. So uh, maybe we're just going to have to pull some strings and and uh, see what we can do. Work those contacts. So, you know. <laughs> have to... Uh, once we confirm it, I'll have to make a bet with the Tiki Man. So, and then, because I'm not going to make the bet until I know I won. Exactly. Because, right. <laughs> uh, you know, unlike some, he'll make you pay up. <laughs> right. So, yeah, only, only bet on things you know that are, uh, uh, you know, a shoe in. Right. So, I'm, I'm kicking myself in the butt for not putting money on the basketball pool, too. Yeah, anyhow. Is your bracket still going? My bracket is still going. Uh, my percentage is 99.9%. Um, I did fall back a little bit in the rankings because of, because it doesn't count against my percentage because I missed a game earlier. It missed, uh, a game earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. So as it worked down, now that we're in the final four, my bracket for one game is, uh, or for the elite eight was incomplete. Uh. Because obviously a team I picked, Kentucky, uh, <laughs> got beat. So right. along the way, so yes, my my bracket was uh, incomplete that way. Right. Um. So, but so it doesn't count against me because yeah, they only gave me that strike. So it's an incomplete bracket. So, um, that caused me to back down. But I am still in the top nine thousand. Of all the people playing on ESPN, so wow, I was ranked at one point in time, number eight hundred and twenty-one. Yeah, in all of ESPN. So, uh, yeah, and that one game dropped you to that 9, one game dro dropped me down by eight thousand people. That's so crazy. It is crazy, but uh, that's the way it goes. And I'm, thank God, I didn't you know I didn't put any money on it because if I would have, I'd have well, lost. Last week I'd we were lost. wishing you to put money. I know, but I'd have lost every dime. <laughs> sure, you know, honestly, when. I was talking to the guys at work. They're like, how did you pick that bracket? How did could you even have known? And I'm like, first of all, I don't follow college basketball. Right. Um, and you wouldn't believe me if I told you how I picked my teams. And they're like, how? I'm like, okay, well, number one, you know, I know enough. I listen to enough, you know, sports news and stuff. So I know when I go down, I'm like, oh, well, that team, I've heard of that team. So that team. Right. It, that team's a basketball school. I know that they're that good. So um, I think I'll go ahead and go with them. Um, and then and when I didn't, you know, wasn't sure, I'd be like, well, if these two actually played football, this team would beat the other team. So I'll go with this team. <laughs> and then. So you picked your, base, so, your basketball teams based on how they play football. Some of them. <laughs> and then when in doubt, I picked the higher seed. So okay. it, was a, it was a mix of all three. And it, it ju and it just worked out. But, yes, I, I did look at a couple of them going, well, if these two would play in football, they would definitely uh, kick this team's butt. So I'll go with this one. And <laughs> that was actually how I picked Alabama for the upset that they pulled. So. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, everybody has their method. That, that went in his mind, and you're free to use it if you want. <laughs> well, But don't put any money down if you try to use that method. No, and don't blame me. So. <laughs> well, we are a little bit over, so uh, – we need to start wrapping things up. Yeah. Yeah. So you have any final words of wisdom, wishes, hopes, or dreams <sighs> for uh, everybody out there? 
everybody just stay safe again i know i say it all the time but please be kind um there's yes. a lot of people out there going through a lot of stuff right you just never know what somebody's and going through yeah so just be nice to each other it doesn't cost anything to smile and if you don't have anything nice to say just don't say it that's right yeah so be nice to me <laughs> oh man <laughs> take All your right. own advice fine <laughs> All right. Well, just like that, our time, you know, sometimes I wish we had three hours because uh, when we get on a roll, uh, we get to talk and have fun with everybody. And then it's like I got to rush to get some music in that I've advertised and, you know, just wish we could keep going and playing more music. So but sometimes maybe we will, you know, but uh, yeah. we, we've talked about that, about, uh, you know, if we're uh, rocking and rolling and having, an after show. having a guest in here that, you know, if we have to, we'll sign off the radio. And just keep going on the YouTube. So, yeah. who knows? That may happen at some point in time. But, That'd be uh, fun. But uh, until then, it's our time for the week. We will see you back here next time. Same time, same channel. Have a great week, everybody. Bye, everybody. I know it's been a lot of fun. But the sad list is all done. The night was very loud and you've been a good crowd But you know it's time to run You've all been very kind, thank you for your time You put me to the test as I try to address All of your requests for the night As we look to the moon and the manager's protocol Well, I don't ever want to end, but for now Song last call. A spirit with his clientele who had the drinks are flowing well. A beer sent from the bar and a healthy tip jar. A handsome tunes that I can sell. It's been a cool room, but it's ending too soon. As they surrender to the tab And they lip sync to the lyrics that they used to recall Anytime I gotta say those words Oh no, last song, last call Last song, last call.